Have you ever found yourself in the situation where you yourself, or perhaps the artist you're recording, has recorded a free time MIDI performance that wasn't done to a click and it ended up being really, really great and you need to either tempo map that so that you can play along to that free time performance on a grid or perhaps reconform that to a static BPM. Okay, that's what we're gonna take a look at in this video. So I've got an instance of acoustic piano ballad preset pulled up in Presence XT. I'm gonna record enable this track. Let's give ourselves a little bit more room over here. And also just to give myself a little bit of help, we're gonna use a quarter preset just so that we can get some chord progressions kicking over here. Now, one change I'm going to make is I'm gonna enable this input mode. I'm gonna to toggle this. What this will allow me to do is actually record the instrument effects into the performance that Studio One ends up recording. All right, so now make sure that our click is deactivated because I don't wanna hear the, any click and let's just run record. I'm gonna play this um, just a four chord progression and I'm not gonna be really picky in terms of my timing, but it'll be generally accurate. My first chord, And we'll go back to the beginning. Okay, so now I'm going to push stop. Let's choose F12 to close all of our floating windows. And we'll make sure that we take this out of record mode and let's also close our browser. So now what ends up happening is we have this four chord performance, this four bars over here. So let's say for argument's sake that this was just breathtakingly amazing and I could never reproduce these chords and I wanted to build a song around it. And I wanted to work at a specific BPM. That's kind of like a good average of what I was doing. Okay, so the very first step before we do anything, the most important step for this whole entire workflow is by default, any instrument track that you create in Studio One, the time base is mapped out to beats. So even though we weren't listening to a click and we were performing this free time, the 120 BPM has nothing to do with this track. So I wanna change this from beats to seconds. Now what this means is that as I change this performance, I could change this to anything and the, the performance itself, it'll never stray from what was recorded, right? Which is a free time performance. So the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna click tab twice, just to tab over to the very beginning, the downbeat. Now, alter option X to cut at that point where my cursor is. We'll get rid of this beginning section and let's just move this all the way over to bar one. So now you can see starts in bar one. Obviously, if we play it against a click, not gonna make any sense, but because we changed this from the beats to the seconds time base, if I make an adjustment, my performance isn't changing, and that's important in this aspect. Okay, so there's our first step. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to open up our tempo track. So we have this option here where we can toggle to see our different global tracks, and also um, one thing I like to do a lot is I like to move this over because I do like to be able to see these individually. Let's open up our tempo track. Now. Our tempo track allows us to do some pretty cool things with respect to manual tempo mapping. This was something that was added in, I think, 4.1.1 or something like that. So as long as you have your time base set to seconds and as long as you have snapping active, when you're working with both instrument parts, which is essentially MIDI or note data and audio, it becomes very, very useful and very easy to use. And this is something that I always do manually. I don't use anything like Melodyne for any automated things. I always do it manually because it's so simple to do manually. So the first thing I'm gonna do, let's open up our editor so we can see this in a little bit more of a zoom state. And sometimes it can also be useful to synchronize your editor to the arrangement, um, which will allow us to zoom these. For now, let's take this off though. Okay, so the idea here is that this is a four bar performance and this point right over here would pretty much be where bar five would start if this was continuing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down the command key and I'm going to click, but before I drag, I'm gonna let go and I'm gonna switch over to the alter option modifier. Now if I click, I can scale the actual tempo. So you might ask, what is scaling? Well, it's really similar to if I was just adjusting this tempo with my mouse wheel and I was watching until the bars kind of lined up. 
The main difference here being that if you have snapping enabled and you're working with instrument parts or audio events, that it has a smart adaptive snapping behavior, which makes everything really, really simple. So this has given me an average BPM of 92.531. Let's listen to that against the click. So that's close there. Here it's off, I can see. And then at this point, it would be back on track. Okay, so we have kind of like our average BPM. And the main reason that I like to do this is just because it closes the gap between me having to drag these points over. Now at this point, I'm going to enable my synchronized editor to arrangement. And let's zoom in a little bit. Before I go any further, one thing I will point out is this might look slightly different based on whether you're in time linear or beat linear mode. I'm staying in time linear mode. So now it's just a matter of command clicking, click, hold and drag, and I can snap over to the downbeats. So check this out. This is now just snapping this performance towards these downbeats. And then I'll snap this one over here. This will be my bar five. Okay. Now I actually don't need the bar five. So we'll come in here and we can just delete this information. And now if I highlight this area and I was to loop enable this selection and let's just scroll to view, we should have a click track that will perfectly match this performance. And it may have four decimal places, but it will perfectly match. Interesting, the first two had four decimal places and the second two were exactly 96 BPM. But regardless, now we have a click track or rather a tempo track that is mapped out to this performance. So if this is your goal and you've gone through and you've adjusted everything bar by bar and everything sounds great, then you're good to go. You can continue to work and get your production done and allow yourself to have a little bit of discrepancy between your, your tempo not being static all the time. But let's say that you wanted to kind of conform this to an average tempo. At this point, it's super easy. Once you have the tempo track that it's been adjusted and it plays perfectly against your instrument part with the time base set to seconds, all you have to do to pretty much enable or embed this tempo into this instrument part is simply switch over to the beats mode. Now what ends up happening was that if I end up adjusting this, let's say I delete everything and I go, okay, I want it all to be 120. I'm going to delete everything. Now it's a perfect 120. Or I could change this to something that was a little bit more reminiscent of the average BPM, which was like 96. Now we have 96 across the board. And now I could just go ahead with my production. So I think the one thing that maybe some people might be asking is, okay, but you know, that seems like it's a lot of work and you know, do you have to use the scale tempo thing? You don't have to use the scale tempo thing. You could start off with this performance and you could leave it set to 120 and, and, and option or rather command click each one of these points over here and drag them over. The main thing I use the scale tempo option for is just to give myself a, an average starting point, but I could easily adjust the tempo here until things were visually lining up. But the other thing to take into account is that perhaps this was just an incredible performance where everything that happened after the downbeats was just a very natural performance and, and it sounded great and the velocities were perfect and the feeling was perfect and you don't have a desire to re-perform that and redo it entirely. And maybe somebody else sent you a MIDI performance and you wanted to use that as a starting point. This is a great way to be able to do that. Anyways, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.